Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Start on Campus session today, uh, Start on Campus, the final checklist. Uh, I'm Jenny Danes, and I use she and her pronouns, and I'm a member of the Start team who is helping you prep for uh, September and arriving to UOG in the fall. Uh, we're really excited to chat with you folks today about some uh, things that you can do as you get ready to prepare uh, for coming to UOG in just a few short weeks. Um, but if you have any questions throughout the presentation, I encourage you to post them in our question and answer chat, which is on the uh, right hand of your screen. Um, but if you have any questions that, you know, might not be answered in this presentation or you might think of after you leave today, you're more than welcome to email us at start at eoguelph.ca uh, and we'll put that in the chat for you. Before I begin, I want to start with a land acknowledgement. The University of Guelph resides on the treaties and territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit. It is recognized that the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples have long-standing and ongoing relationships with this land. This is a gathering place where we work and learn and is home to many past, present, and future First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. It is important that we recognize the la lands of Indigenous peoples both locally, across Turtle Island, and around the world. We acknowledge the land because we have a collective responsibility to this place and its people's histories, rights, and presence. So with that, we're really excited to chat with you all today um, about the final checklist and what you folks can do to prepare um, for arriving to U of G in just a few short weeks. So we'll talk about preparing um, for September, what you should pack if you're living in residence or how you can prep for moving in off campus talking about school supplies and what to bring, um, independence in university, making friends in university, and also helping you plan your orientation week so that you can make the most out of it. So uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, hand it over to Isha to talk with us about prepping for September. Hi everyone, my name is Isha. I'm on the orientation team. I use she, her pronouns and you will see me again after I talk a little bit. So before you get to campus, uh, some you'll need to start prepping for some things while living at home in order to set yourself up for success. You should have already started preparing for your arrival on campus, but if you haven't, don't worry, you still have plenty of time to sort things out. So about two weeks from moving in, so roughly about now, uh, or a few days ago from now, you should begin double checking to see if you've purchased everything you would need for move-in. So this can mean making sure the bed sheets and pillows will fit um, because all beds in residence are a standard twin size bed. Um, so I'll try to avoid bringing anything that's bigger because that just won't fit. You'll also wanna make sure that you're not bringing anything that's prohibited into residence. So this could mean things like alcohol paraphernalia, kitchen appliances that could easily catch on fire. So think of things like a hot plate or anything that has an open flame like candles. You can check out the full list of items to bring and the list of items not to bring at the link that will be put in the chat soon. Um, so a little bit about me. I have some really protective parents and I found that creating a visiting schedule with them really helped before I left home. It just helped make sure my schedule was a bit more stable. I set a rule that I would go home once or twice a semester. And this didn't include things like winter break and reading week and winter semester. Uh, this helped me like quite a bit as I set that boundary very early that I would not be commuting home very frequently and it helped me gain some independence from my parents. When I was in my second year in team residence, I found reaching out to all my roommates through email prior to moving in and creating a group chat on a different social media platform really helped. Um, it was a nice way to just stay in contact with my roommates in a really like informal and casual way. And you can coordinate what you're bringing so you don't have any doubles of anything. The last thing I would suggest is something that you do when you get to campus and finish moving. It'll be a little bit awkward, so you probably won't know anyone. I would recommend becoming familiar with your building amenities. This means going to check out the closest washroom, the laundry rooms, games rooms, dining halls, and study spaces near your room. Becoming familiar with the space you'll live in for the next eight months will really help you out in the long run. All right, 
Thank you, Isha, for telling us about all the things to bring to res. Um, I just want to introduce myself quickly. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm going into my final semester of a neuroscience and psychology double major. Um, so now that Isha has told us all the things that you should bring for res, I want to talk about the other things that you should bring uh, to campus, so things that maybe you would need for class um, or just, you know, if you're hanging out on campus, some good things to bring. Um, so when you are coming to campus for lectures, uh, one of the most important things to bring is something to take notes on. So whether that's a laptop, a tablet, a notebook for you, um, you'll want to have something that you can jot some notes uh, down on. I personally liked bringing my laptop and my tablet just in case, you know, the battery died on something. And uh, one thing I like to do a lot is to write over the slides, like I would download them and write over them uh, on my tablet with a pencil. Um, another important thing to think about is how long you will be on campus, uh, because this might change the things you need to bring. If you know you'll be around all day, consider bringing some snacks or pack a lunch for yourself. If you for ever forget, it is nice that there are plenty of places on campus where you can grab a bite to eat. Uh, but bringing some food with you is a great way to save some money and make sure you aren't feeling hungry throughout the day. And it's also great if you get hungry in the middle of a three hour lecture, maybe you can have a snack in your bag. Um, another thing to always remember to bring is your student card. Whether you need to get into residence with your student card, uh, sign out a book at the library or take the bus, having your student card handy is super helpful and it can also help others identify that you are a student. Um, and you also will need to bring it for midterms and exams so that they can take attendance. So getting in the habit of bringing it every time you go to campus is definitely a good idea. Um, lastly, if you have labs or seminars scheduled on a day that you're coming to campus, remember to bring any equipment you need for the lab or the seminar. So uh, for me, I was in neuroscience and I had chemistry labs in my first year. And for these labs, I always had to remember to bring my lab coat, my goggles and my chemistry lab manual. So just look at your schedule uh, the day before or the morning of and think of all the supplies and things that you might need to bring. Thank you, Anna, for telling us about everything that we need to bring with us to university. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Liv. I use she and her pronouns. I am also on the orientation team, and I just graduated from my fifth year in the Applied Science program, majoring in Family Studies and Human Development. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about personalizing your space. So when you think about your life at home or where you're living, what makes you fond of it? It's probably the familiarity or the people that you're with. So when you come into a new residence or a new space in your campus, there's ways that we can make these spaces feel more like home as well. Um, a great way to settle in for your first semester is to personalize your space. So you can personalize your walls with photos of family, friends and pets, maybe even a poster. Um, and if you don't have any posters, the Central Student Association runs a really great poster sale in the University Center courtyard during the first few weeks of classes. Some people also like to put up things like tapestries or fairy or LED lights. These are really commonly seen across campus um, and in off campus living as well. And you can also think about personalizing your desk with your schedule to keep track of where you're supposed to be um, or a calendar with your assignments and maybe even a desk lamp if it gets dark at night and you still want to be able to see what you're doing. Um, you also don't have to bring absolutely everything when you move into your new space. It can be nice to see what your space looks like and decide um, what you need after assessing how much space you have and how you want to utilize it. So whatever you need to make your space more comfortable um, within reason, as long as it follows the rules of where you're staying is a good idea. And this is helpful because you can showcase your identity through where you're living and it can help you feel more secure and like you belong. So university can be a big transition and one of the biggest changes is the amount of independence you gain when you come to university. Some of you may be coming right from high school and unlike high school, no one is looking over your shoulder and checking in on you to make sure that you're going to class or things are getting done on time. 
In university, you were responsible for knowing all your dates and deadlines, waking yourself up and getting yourself ready for class, um, and also asking questions when you don't understand something and seeking out help. There are tons of resources to support you here at the university, um, but it's really important that you're, you know you're the one responsible for accessing them. And if you have trouble or not sure who to turn to, all you have to do is ask. Part of this increase in independence means that university faculty and staff are not allowed to release any of your personal information to anyone but you. Your parents should not, um, this includes things like grades, financial information, health status info, etc. Your parents should not be emailing and communicating um, with any professors or university staff, and we expect that all that information and questions come directly from you. It's important to know that when you're communicating with the university and um, that you're using your U of G official email as this is how we identify that you are a U of G student. Um, so we don't want to be using any of your Hotmail or Gmail accounts as well. University can also be a big adjustment for your supporters and your parents. Uh, it's important to chat with your parents and supporters about uh, your boundaries while you're at university and what communication will look like while you're at U of G. If you're living away from home, think about how often you'll touch base in creating a communication schedule. Like um, Isha mentioned, maybe you'll plan a phone call once a week or visits home. If you're going to be living at home, what are the rules and boundaries about communicating when you're coming and going for classes? Has this changed now that you're in university? These are all important things to think about um, when talking to your parents about um, coming to university. So I'm going to pass it over to Patrick to tell you a little bit about his uh, personal story. It looks like Patrick may be frozen. So we are going to move on. Right. Um, uh, thank you, Jen, for passing it off to me. Uh, I'm just going to turn off this. My mark has to be a finicky. Mm. All right. What we're going to do is we're now going to talk about some of the resources that we have available for uh, your parents. Um, so we actually also have, just like we have resources for you, we have plenty of resources for your parents and supporters as well. Uh, just because this is a time of independence um, and we are here to support you doesn't mean that your parents and supporters won't have any questions or want to kind of be involved with what's happening that involvement and support just looks a little different while you're at university. So we have a parent and supporters guide on the student experience website, and we'll pop that in the chat for you folks to see. And this is a resource guide for your parents that gives kind of an overview of the main things that are happening month by month um, at the university and some of the key events and dates and deadlines. On there, there are also a few specific parent and supporter uh, websites that our different campus partners put out. Um, and we are also doing some parent and supporter information sessions. Uh, so one is actually available and happening tomorrow um, at 5 p.m. So if you know that your parents have a lot of questions um, or are looking to ask someone about what that transition to university looks like, please encourage them to attend. So now I'm going to pass it over to Liv to talk about um, making friends in orientation. So coming into a new space, especially with how our last two years have looked, can be really intimidating, but it's important to remember that as a lot of us step onto campus without large social networks in Guelph, um, and starting university is a great time to connect with people and make new friends. So you might be wondering, how do I make friends at university? And there's lots of different ways to do this. 
So you can meet people during orientation week from your program at the meetings for major sessions. These are academic sessions that are hosted by your department and they help familiarize you with everything you need to know about your program um, and other new students just like you will be at these sessions as well. Um, some programs and majors will also be running events during orientation week so make sure you check the O week schedule on Griff Life and we will talk about this later more in depth as well. There are also lots of opportunities to meet people outside of your program too. So we have over 300 clubs at the University of Guelph that you can browse on the Griff Life uh, page. So maybe you're interested in activism or exploring parts of your identity or even taking up a brand new hobby like juggling. Um, the possibilities are really endless and if you find that there's something missing on campus that you'd like to connect with other students, students about, you can always form a new club through the Central Student Association. Another great thing about being in a city like Guelph is that there's so many things to do off campus as well, so you don't have to stick around all the time. Um, so with your bus pass, you can get all around Guelph and partake in what the city has to offer. Um, so really close by and just down from the university, we have um, canoeing and ice cream, which is located at the Boathouse Tea Room. And there's also lots of great restaurants and shops to explore as well. Um, another great thing about the U of G community is that it's really tight knit and we have a really welcoming feeling when you arrive. So when you step onto campus during orientation week, you'll notice that lots of people are going to be wearing red shirts that say orientation week 2022 on them. And these are upper year students who are here to help you find your way around campus um, and welcome you. So just like you, they've gone through the process and the experience of being new. So they come back and volunteer so that they can have a positive impact on your first week as well. You will see them at different events, helping run lots of different activities and are generally just around to be a friendly face if you have any questions. Um, something else that we'd like to highlight is that um, stepping into your new life at U of G doesn't mean that you have to leave your old life behind entirely. So who you were before you came to university is just as important as who you are now. And your undergraduate experience is meant to enhance all of the great things that make up who you are. And it also helps uh, you grow into a better version of yourself. So the friends that you have back home might be going through similar transitions as you if they're going into post-secondary. Um, and it's nice to stay connected and know that you aren't alone. So don't be afraid to reach out to your old friends and uh, have a chat with them. Um, and just like we have to schedule time to study, we also have to make time for our personal and our social lives so that we can keep things balanced. Um, so if we throw ourselves entirely into school and studying without intending to uh, the other important aspects of our wellness, we can unintentionally burn ourselves out. So maybe you have some things that you used to do when you were at home, like having sit down dinners or movies or game nights, um, or maybe there was a show that you used to watch um, every week with your friends and you can still do all of these things, especially with um, all the great technology we have these days. Um, and if you and the people that you're close with want to block off time during the same time every week or find something every once in a while that works for you, you can still share um, time and activities with each other to stay connected. And this is a really great way to prioritize your self-care during your first semester at U of G. All right. Uh Hello, everybody. I think my Wi-Fi is working this time, so hooray for that. Um, so my name is Patrick. I'm also a member of the orientation team. Uh, I use he, him pronouns, and I'm going into my fourth year of biomedical sciences this year. Um, we are super excited to welcome all of you to camp in just a couple of weeks. Um, and orientation week is definitely going to be a blast. So I just wanted to give some time today to talk about how everyone's going to be planning their O week and how they're going to choose what events to go to. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions over the summer regarding how to choose O week events, um, how to attend O week events, how to pick the right ones for you. Any of those questions, um, you're all in the right place, right? So I would like to introduce you all to your best friend, which I have up on the screen here, which is Griff Life. So this website will be your one stop shop for finding events and student clubs which fit your interests and schedule. Um, you're going to want to sign into Griff Life using your U of G single sign on, which is your school provided email. Um, and from there, you'll have access to see. Basically every single O week event um, that is posted there. 
Um, on the left hand side of your screen, you'll see the events tab. And if you click on it, you'll actually be brought to the events page. Uh, here, you're able to either scroll through the whole event list or you can use the filters on the left to narrow it down to a specific date or time. Uh, this is especially useful if you have one day that isn't as busy and maybe you're looking for something to do. For example, here, uh, I filtered by Sunday, September 4th, for example, and as you can see, the events will show up on the right that are all on Sunday, September 4th, um, and they're also arranged on Griff Life in chronological order, so it goes from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. all the way down to the PMs and so on. So it's it's arranged pretty logically. Along with date and time, you can also filter by themes, categories, and even perks. So this is useful if you only want to see events that are occurring in a certain subject area, events that uh, are focused for a certain group, or my favorite, you can filter by events that provide free food if that's what you're looking for. So little tip there. Um, also on the top, you can see that you can also search for keywords directly. Um, so if you wanted to attend an event for the human kinetics major, for example, you'd be able to just search human kinetics and lo and behold, there are all the human kinetics events. So pretty useful as well. And here is an example of what happens when you actually click on an event. Um, as you can see, all of the important information is displayed, such as date, time and location. Uh, along with this, there may be additional fields such as cost. Um, all O week events are free, so the cost is not relevant for O week. Um, or there is also an RSVP button. Um, some events will require you to RSVP, but the vast majority of them during O week do not require you to RSVP. Uh, additionally, it's also good to read the full description of the Griff Life event because sometimes the event might mention things such as please bring a pair of closed toed running shoes or please bring your own refillable water bottle. Uh, so it's good to read that just so you're prepared to have the most fun possible at your event. Uh, next, I just wanted to talk about the other big, big part of Griff Life, which is the organization tab. So here you'll be able to find a list of all the student clubs at the University of Guelph, and you're able to search for keywords or just scroll the list. Um, and personally, I remember in my first year, I scrolled the entire list and made notes of which clubs I wanted to join. And from there, I knew which events I needed to attend. Um, if you are getting stuck on the events tab in terms of which events you wanna go to, I think a good alternate strategy is to find cool clubs that you're interested in first, and then you can check out their O-Week events and build your schedule from there. And lastly, for me today, I wanted to give some time to talk about building your O-Week schedule. Uh, I definitely would recommend making some sort of schedule, even if it is a rough one, that which can serve as a guide for what events you want to go to and all that good stuff. Uh, O-Week does have a lot of major programming, as we like to call it, in the form of staff run events, which are the main staples in everyone's calendar, such as the induction of scholars, meetings for majors, building meetings, the pep rally, the block party, uh, and all those good events. However, there's also open programming blocks, which are designed for you to choose your own adventure, so to speak, and go to student run events, which interest you. Uh, Isha is going to go into more detail in the next section regarding the different types of events and what makes them all special. Um, so I'll leave that for her. Uh, but while all, what I'm gonna talk about is more the process of building your schedule instead. Um, I think that something as simple as drawing it out on a piece of paper or just using an app like OneNote is a great idea. Uh, you can draw it out on a, or you can even draw it out on like a real day planner or like a real calendar. Um, I would also recommend making this schedule with friends, floor mates, or maybe even people you've met in your program so far. Uh, planning to go to the same O week events together is a great way to get closer to the people that you've been introduced to. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, you can use Griff Life to help you make this schedule, of course. Uh, as I said before, if you notice a hole in your schedule one day, you can filter by that date and time and see what pops up, see if those events interest you. However, don't think that this means you need to be going to events 24 seven. It is important to be mindful of breaks and when to take them. Of course, we encourage students to try to make the most out of their O week, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking an evening off and just relaxing with your friends. Okay, hi everyone, I'm back again. So I just wanna talk about the different types of events during O week and how you could really make O week yours. Um, o week basically lasts from September 4th to the 12th. And during that time, there are over 200 events running. So it might seem really, really overwhelming at first. 
no one expects you to go to every single event because there are many that are happening at the same time and there's overlaps as well. There are some larger events like Griff Fest, Can I Kiss You, Pep Rally, to name a few. Um, and those happen when there's nothing else going on, so you can go to those and not be worried about missing anything else that you might want to attend. The really fun thing about O Week is that it's really customizable. This means you can choose how you want to participate and in what capacity. This could mean going to back to back events like I did when I was in my first year or taking breaks as you choose. You can go to basically any event that's being run during the week. These are events that are run by staff, faculty, but a big majority of the events are run by students just like us. When you go to these events, you're able to meet other people in your programs, upper years and other new students like yourselves. There's drop in style events, those that start in certain times, the list really does go on. There are also some events like scavenger hunts where you're not only meeting new people, but going to different areas on campus. And then there are more chill sit down type of events like plant pot painting. The whole idea of a week is for you to start finding your own community on campus. So this can look like a faith group, cultural group, interest group, academic group. And like I said, that list can go on and on and on. Both the I'm Griffin app, which you should have by now, and Griff Life can seem very overwhelming, but you can always filter the events like Patrick mentioned based on an interest or a type of event you would like to go to. A really good tip is to try to step out of your comfort zone in a way where you're still comfortable. And with all of that chat about orientation week, we hope you're getting really excited to come and join us. Um, in just a few short weeks. Um, we hope that you learned some things today about you know, how you can prep for September, but also how you can make the most out of your a week schedule to find events and um, different programs that will really interest you and help you connect with other folks and meet friends. Like all of our presenters today have said, it's really important to remember that each of your O weeks will look different based on what you're interested in, your different parts of your identity, and also what type of person you are. Uh, there's more relaxed events like each I mentioned, um, and also some larger um, based events um, with larger crowds. So really take some time to consider what you want to get out of O week and look at what we have to offer. But that is it for our official presentation today. If you folks have any questions about um, anything that we chatted about today, you can email start at uofguelph.ca. Uh, this is the start team. You met us today um, and we answer all those questions. No such thing is a silly question. Uh, we get different types of questions all the time. And the, the chances are if you ask a question, uh, someone else has already asked a question to us in the same time. So if you folks, um, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in the chat, so we'll end our session here today, but we wanna wish you all a great rest of your summer and we look forward to meeting you all uh, in September. Bye everyone.